In the 4th century BC, a ruler named Ptolemy I Soter had a dream. He wanted to build a library unlike any other. His vision was the Great Library of Alexandria. Located in the bustling city of Alexandria, the library was meant to be a place where all the world's knowledge could be found. Ptolemy I Soter had been a general under Alexander the Great. Alexander believed in bringing knowledge together. When he died, Ptolemy I Soter inherited part of his empire. He wanted to continue Alexander's dream of a center for learning. The library quickly became a symbol of knowledge and power. It attracted scholars from all over the ancient world. These scholars came to study, debate, and share their ideas. They helped to make Alexandria a center of learning. The library was more than just a place to store books. It was a place where people could come to learn and grow. The library was a symbol of the power of knowledge. The Great Library of Alexandria was a magnificent building. It was designed to be both beautiful and functional. Imagine walking through its grand halls. They were lined with shelves full of scrolls. The library was divided into different sections. Each section held scrolls on a specific subject. There were sections for literature, history, mathematics and more. This made it easy for scholars to find the information they needed. The library also had lecture halls, gardens and even a zoo. These spaces provided places for scholars to relax and socialize. The zoo was particularly popular. It allowed scholars to study animals from different parts of the world. At the heart of the library was its archive. This was where the most valuable scrolls were kept. The archive was carefully designed to protect the scrolls from damage. It was kept cool and dry to prevent the scrolls from decaying. The Great Library of Alexandria was home to hundreds of thousands of scrolls. These scrolls contained a wealth of knowledge from all over the ancient world. The library's collection was constantly growing. Ptolemy I Soter and his successors were determined to collect all the world's knowledge. They sent royal agents to all corners of the known world to buy up scrolls. Sometimes they even borrowed scrolls from other libraries and never returned them. The scrolls were written in many different languages. These included Greek, Egyptian and Babylonian. To make the scrolls accessible to scholars, the library employed translators. The translators worked tirelessly to translate the scrolls into Greek, which was the language of scholarship at the time. The library's collection was vast and diverse. It contained works of literature, history, philosophy, mathematics, astronomy and medicine. The scrolls covered every subject imaginable. Section 4, A Gathering of Great Minds. The Great Library of Alexandria attracted some of the brightest minds from all over the ancient world. Scholars came to Alexandria to study the library's vast collection and to debate with other scholars. The library became a melting pot of ideas. One of the most famous scholars who worked at the library was a man named Euclid. Euclid was a mathematician. He's best known for his book. This book is still studied by mathematicians today. Another famous scholar who worked at the library was Eratosthenes. He was a geographer, astronomer and mathematician. He is famous for calculating the circumference of the Earth with remarkable accuracy. There were many other notable scholars who worked at the library. They made important contributions to many different fields of knowledge, including astronomy, mathematics and medicine. Their discoveries helped to shape the ancient world. Section 5. The Slow Fade of Knowledge Sadly, the Great Library of Alexandria did not last forever. Over time, the library began to decline. There were a number of reasons for this. One reason was political instability. As the Ptolemaic dynasty began to weaken, Alexandria became less safe. There were riots and wars, and the library was often caught in the crossfire. In 47 BC, Julius Caesar accidentally set fire to part of the library during his war against the Egyptians. Another reason for the library's decline was a lack of funding. The Ptolemaic rulers who came after Ptolemy I Soter were not as interested in supporting the library as he had been. As a result, the library began to fall into disrepair. The final blow to the library came in the 7th century AD. The Muslim army conquered Alexandria. The library was destroyed. No one knows exactly how the library was destroyed, but it is a tragic loss for the world. Section 6, A Legacy in Ashes. The destruction of the Great Library of Alexandria was a terrible loss for the world. The library was a treasure trove of knowledge. Its destruction represents a significant loss of cultural heritage. 
Despite its destruction, the library continues to inspire people today. The library is a reminder of the importance of knowledge and learning. Today, there are efforts to rebuild the great library of Alexandria. The Bibliotheca Alexandrina, a new library, was built near the site of the original library. The new library is a fitting tribute to the legacy of the great library of Alexandria. It is a place where people can come to learn and explore the world of ideas. The Great Library of Alexandria may be gone, but its legacy lives on.